Okay, yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining. And I hope I can um, give a little bit um, a better understanding what this new project and new idea is about. So uh, the basic goal is to, yeah, to work on a, on a new version for BISC, so let's call it BISC 2.0, which will be that, uh, yeah, to the current BISC and to not have too much confusion with the current uh, uh, and, and project, we decided to give it a code project name, MISC. Um, so that in the in the code, we use this as the package name also to not get stuck with the old code base. And from communication, we use MISC basically as uh, yeah, to not have this, uh, this confusion or whatever. But uh, it's clear that the goal is that it's the new BISC project when once it's, it's feature complete and when once it has earned uh, enough that it can replace BISC. <clears throat> so yeah, why? Uh, why we are working on a new project? Uh, as we've seen over the past months, and it was not surprised, it was known that this will happen, of course, someday, is that the current launching trade protocol in BISC has some limitations with high mining fees. We have four transactions. And yeah, when mining fees are high, small volume trades are not really feasible. We could, with some optimization, reduce it to probably two, even maybe one transaction. But even one transaction, uh, yeah, has some mining, some uh, costs, some mining fees, and it has some other issues as well, like uh, privacy, yeah, fingerprinting, the transaction type, and so on, and uh, <coughs> the delay, and so on. So I was a month. I was researching the whole blockchain space and looking out for the optimal, the best trade protocol, uh, current risk trade protocol. And my conclusion was that there is no best protocol which fits to all purposes. And I think the better approach is to offer multiple trade protocols and the user can pick what's the best for their purposes. The main Different angle. I mean, of course, everybody wants to have, every, uh, yeah, uh, the best properties of of a of a proper of, of a protocol combined in one. So it should be perfectly secure. It should be cheap. It should be instant. It should be simple, and that simply doesn't work. I mean, the most secure protocols like atomic cross chain swaps, they are not fast. They are not cheap because you also have on chain transaction and with that confirmation time and so on. <coughs> And it just doesn't, it's just not needed always. When you do a trade with 20 or with $50, you don't need to see of a, a cross chain trade protocol, a, a, a atomic cross chain uh, protocol. Uh, it's maybe enough to have a reputation based protocol where it's not so secure and maybe some users get scammed in that you have uh, yeah, one fraud in 100 or in 200 cases, but then the max to a $50, but you save on mining fees. Maybe you have no fees at all because it's completely off chain, the transaction, and it can be instant basically depending on the type how it's done. So you have a lot of benefits, and of course, you have some downside uh, from the security. So the basic idea is to offer different types of protocols, and the focus is, of course, of the, of the most advanced and secure protocols like Atomic Russian. Uh, swap, but of course, it also doesn't work for fiat. For fiat, we need something different. <clears throat> so, to provide a suite of different protocols is basically uh, the goal, and to let the user decide what's the best choice for his, for their context. And yeah, as I said, I, when I did the uh, research in the broader space, I mean, over the past years, we never uh, being active on this it, uh, consumes a lot of time, and you are missing a lot of development. So I tried to um, yeah to catch up a little bit. Atomic cross chain swaps are around since many years, but now I think they're getting really production ready, especially with the adapter signature based approach, which can be for Monero Bitcoin swaps, and uh, covenants on liquids are very promising. With that, you have much more capabilities for more complex contracts that can be used for loans. Uh, there. Decentralized finance space is not a password anymore. It's something very real and uh, decentralized lending <coughs> is here to stay. And it's, uh, it has some very solid use cases and it's very popular. 
So I think we should also extend you not only for peer-to-peer -peer trades uh, exchange, uh, but also for other uh, contract types like loans, like options, whatever. So uh, to basically enable any on it to be executed over this application. And from a more high level, a more conceptual point of view, I think in BISC we made maybe some uh, mistakes from concept, like we, di we didn't put enough effort to get it up, like adding a payment method, uh, use can go over the process like making a proposal and providing the information and all this but i think at the end it's too much friction and too much cost for the users and uh, i think a better approach efficient approach is to let the edges decide the edges have the knowledge when some user in some country where there's a special payment method which is the best for crypto trading uh, they know all the details about it and they know the risk exposure and so on so when we need to learn all this, it's a lot of effort for us and to justify that we can add it, that we think it's secure. And so we take a lot of burden, a lot of work on us and it's well. So I think a better approach is like local Bitcoin was doing basically. And I think that's at the end, the recite of the success of local Bitcoins that they really let the users uh, provide the information and and also give them the responsibility when they get scammed they have to be responsible to, to understand what's going on there and i think we should move much more in this direction to have it more bottom-up approach where the users can features in without uh, yeah without apparently in bisc involved and i think that makes uh, yeah that scales much better and that makes it just more usable for a certain type of users, especially in niche, niche markets. And another aspect, what we didn't really anticipate probably initially, and what we don't still don't use enough is this social and community aspect. I mean, BISC is really a, a, a fantastic brand. It's, it's a great community around and the trading experience thing, like when you trade on a centralized exchange, where it's just a completely cold and with the other cypherpunk on the other on the other side with the trader chat we have seen already it got very popular and people got really great experience that when there are some small problems and the other guy the other person on the other side is reacting very friendly and so on you just you yeah you happen to have had this interaction and of course it's a different um a different aspect uh, with privacy and so on. We need to do it that privacy is not uh, weakened, but but I think there are some um, there's some room to emphasize and to uh, to use those aspects strong and to make yeah to work more on this on this asset what we have that BISC is a social and a community project and to yeah to bring this strong into the whole concept. So of course, all this could be theoretically done in BISC as well. So why we don't do it in BISC? <clears throat> Regarding the protocols, um, BISC was designed as a single protocol application from the overall code architecture and everything. Uh, to change this now for multiple trade protocols is a hack. Uh, I mean, it can be done somehow, but it will never work very well. And the more protocols, and especially the more different contracts, when we would like to add loans or other contracts, it gets even more difficult. It's just not a good idea to to hack around too, for too long because it's, it's getting worse and become unmaintainable. And uh, yeah, and the costs for doing small things are. And it's generally. Yeah, and with this protocol, you can imagine like you have a car, you have a diesel car, and now because uh, electric cars and other technologies are more, yeah, more interesting and more usable, you want to change it uh, with a hybrid engine to change your existing diesel car with a hybrid. You never get the Toyota pre uh, Primus with uh, by that approach. So it's much better to uh, to design it newly uh, and design it with that as a core requirement. And Similar, yeah, when you have a project which is operational, where real money is floating around, any change can break anything, and it's very difficult and risky to do bigger changes. And we got burned several times in the past that even with relatively small changes uh, ended up with, with big problems. And it's a little bit like 
changing the change plane. Yeah, you can do it if it's absolutely necessary, maybe not changing the engine, but uh, fixing stuff in operation. But it's just much more difficult and has much more costs and much more risks. And yeah, of course, BISC has a technical depth over seven years development. Uh, there's no doubt about this. And it's, it's just, it's harder to do stuff. It's less fun for developers. It's harder to onboard new developers. They need to, to learn a big convoluted code base with a new fresh project. Everything is of course more clean and easier. And uh, it's easier to attract developers. <coughs> the integrated wallet in BISC is maybe great for UX. And that's of course a goal as well to keep the UX experience uh, for MISC. But it's a big liability from security point of view to have a peer-to-peer -peer application connected with the wallet was not a good idea in my point of view. And we want to avoid this uh, to keep the wallet external and uh, and reduce the uh, security vulnerability, uh, yeah, vulnerability surface. With Tor, so BISC is based, the BISC peer-to-peer -peer network is based on Tor only. And we have seen in the past when Tor got under attack, and that happened several times, then BISC got troubles as well. In the worst case, it could become much worse, that it becomes really completely unusable. And it has, has just shown that Tor is the same in BISC. So that's another area of what we want to fi fix and change in MISC. And again, of course, all this can be done in, in BISC as well, uh, but it's much, much more difficult. <coughs> and the PNDOS vulnerability, um, there are some basic protection in, but peer uh, networks are vulnerable to DDoS and also the Tor network. And they're actually uh, going the same approach what we are planning with the MISC, but I come to this a little bit later. So uh, that's another problem, what we, which is uh, existing in BISC yet and hard to fix, and what we want to, uh, yeah, to do differently in the new project. Yeah, I talked ar already about some of the ideas, but uh, let's just, um, yeah, let's point it out more, more explain. <coughs> so the multiple trade protocols, that's a core. That's the, the main reason why we start on this. And it shouldn't be only uh, limited to trade protocols, exchange protocols, but uh, also should include different uh, financial contracts. So the broader approach is to have any financial contract Contract. And there is an execution platform engine which can execute these contracts in a secure way, and uh, that can be very flexible. It can be done anything that can be represented in code. Yeah, the wallets uh, we want all over RPC interface or whatever, uh, and it's also much more flexible to integrate different wallets, uh, also hardware wallets on the table, and. Um, it adds uh, something on the user experience because the user can select their, pre uh, yeah, their, their preferred wallet and get the best security and privacy for their circumstances. So when they want, when they have already a full Bitcoin node, then they will use the full Bitcoin node as their main wallet. Otherwise, they would use Electrum when they, then they get a similar privacy and security model like we have with Bitcoin J with our um, provided nodes. Uh, but they have much better uh, performance because it's not this uh, pseudo or yeah, peer to peer system which got reduced to a federated system at the end. We only inherit the downsides of a peer to peer system like with Bitcoin J. <coughs> and we are by default, we will support minimum set of wallets like one full no uh, wallet and one light uh, wallet like Electrum and Bitcoin for Bitcoin. Uh, but their technical infrastructure is there that any other um, other layers, uh, yeah, the, the connection layer to the wallet. Um, so it should be easy to add support for different wallets. The peer-to-peer -peer network will run over Tor and I2P for normal users, <coughs> as the user can select what they want to use. And um, for network nodes, uh, we also add, or we all, we add in general also clear net option, but that's only interesting basically for nodes which don't require privacy, like network node, nodes, like seed nodes. So they get 
uh, yeah, better speed, better efficiency. They can sync up much faster with ClearNet. And those uh, those networks are running in parallel. That works already in the current prototype <coughs> code base. And so when you send a message and you run with Tor in I2P, you send the message two times over the two different networks. And when the Tor network has some troubles and your message doesn't arrive with super slow, then P2P, uh, the I2P network wins. I2P is generally faster like Tor. The startup is maybe slower, but then uh, sending messages is faster. So you also gain some and mainly reliability. So we are not, we reduce this single point of failure. And in future, we also want to support other upcoming protocols like the NUM uh, network. It's a new mixed net network, which is in development still, but hopefully gets production ready maybe in one year or half a year. And as soon as it's uh, ready, we will have a look into it as well. Um, yeah, we add a DDoS protection layer to the peer-to-peer -peer network, which will be based on proof of work as their default uh, protection. For normal operation, there will be no real proof of work required. It's so minimal that you don't see any difference. It's only in the case of a DDoS attack, you get basically a kind of like a low balancing that your node when you are on the attack you increase your required proof of work and all the peers who want to send to it, especially the attacker need to do much more proof of work and the valid nodes they maybe don't care to wait half a minute to send the message to do the required proof of work but an attacker who wants to spam the network with millions of messages uh, get slowed down mm -hmm. and there might be other solutions and especially in the context of BISC we have probably some using account age witness uh, data but we have some data where we can prove that this is a legitimate user a long-term user and this data could be used to get a kind of like a ticket um, like a token and with this token you can override the proof of work requirement so even if the network is under attack all the, the users who have traded over the past months they can prove they're not the attacker they're uh, and by that they don't they are not affected by this uh, uh, stress and that's actually something what Tor is also looking into it they I think they are not decided how to do it exactly but they talk about this token system and as well about uh, proof of work so uh, it's interesting to see that they are probably going in the uh, parallel in the same direction and uh, we should follow up with them what they are doing exactly and uh, and learn from yeah from their decisions <laughs> That's not implemented yet, really. Also, it's, it's set up uh, from the basics, and I did some prototype with proof of work. But uh, this part is not integ integrated yet in the current peer-to-peer -peer system. <coughs> and yeah, conceptually, we should focus on uh, market maker use case early on. That's another big topic in decentralized exchange, also in the tech space. This automated market makers uh, use cases. I looked pretty closely to it and I got convinced that it's not such a great idea like it is sold and, uh, but I don't want to get into this here. Uh, <clears throat> so I think it wouldn't make sense and it would be very difficult uh, with the limited uh, smart contract capabilities of Bitcoin to try to replicate this model directly. But beside that, I think it's even not a good model. It's very expensive at the end and it's just list from Good marketing, uh, in short. But um, but of course, market maker makers are super important. Liquidity is super important. So we really should focus on uh, to provide trading bots for arbitrage to make it very attractive for market makers to uh, contribute early on. Yeah, for privacy, we want to improve a lot that the user has basically a very fine grained control about that. Identity. Is anything yeah, which identifies this activity um, in, in BISC, like a trade, like an offer, <coughs> like a message on a public chat room. And it's the two core elements of identity are the network address, or the Tor address and I2P address, and uh, the cryptographic keys or the signature and encryption keys. And <coughs> yeah, we want to build the whole system that uh, for any user interaction you can create, by default, you are creating your isolated identity. So when you chat something on an open chat room, this identity is different like the identity what you use in an offer. 
but you can manage it when you want to build up reputation you can link offers together you can yeah you can manage your identity however you like from the one extreme that you have everything connected and basically users can see how how many offers you have online and that you are this guy who is um, who is chatting on the chat room with that, that entity or that you are completely isolated and that it appears like you are just a completely new user with a fresh application. Another feature what we want to plan, uh, what we want to do is to keep offers online. So even if you go offline, your offer will stay online. It will be visible that you are not online, but when one, somebody wants to take your offer, they can send you basically a mailbox message and online again you can get back to the other trader and more a little bit interaction of local bitcoin also that's more kind of like a communication and negotiation op option also when users don't want to do this they can opt out of this of course but um, i think it it extends the possibilities for trading and makes it this problem that you have to be online when you have an offer uh, becomes a little bit less of a problem when uh, you have still the chance that some uh, intrader can, uh, that you can uh, get back to them later, maybe uh, half a day delayed and still can do the trade then. And in general, as I said, we want to do more the bottom-up approach that users can add payment methods, uh, altcoins. Of course, it has some limit, uh, some downsides as well. We cannot do input verification when it's a uh, yeah, when it's completely custom free text uh, payment method. Uh, but the basic idea is to enable this. Uh, there will be probably some uh, core first class uh, payment methods where we have like in BISC all the verification on. And then there will be a kind of payment methods where the user just can add the assent medias with X, Y, Z payment method and the other user need to be aware that this is maybe not verified by BISC experts, but uh, they have to do the, um, yeah, to check themselves if that's really safe and have, uh, what's the chargeback risk and so on. Mm -hmm. And to add more social and community aspects, we talked already about that. So what I saw on the development side, mm -hmm. it will be from startup from beginning, very API protocol driven. So all the different front uh, uh, front ends will use the same API to communicate, and we are not running into this problem. What we had in BISC a little bit that too much code were closer to the front end because there was only one front end and one client for long term. And to edit and later was more effort, like when it would have been differently from beginning. It's in Java 16, so the latest stable Java version. Also, all the libraries and frameworks what we're using, we try to yeah, use the most modern and uh, up-to-date uh, development environment. We develop in parallel, or at least set up the infrastructure that we can develop in parallel, the web, uh, web front end, HTML, JavaScript front end, a mobile version, <coughs> and JavaFX version, as well as some uh, script-based uh, client and CLI for enabling uh, market maker and uh, trading bots and so on. And of course, it depends a little bit on the dev um, power as when we we need uh, developers in that area to really do it in parallel. And it might come with the problem that those new developers are not domain experts in BISC, so they cannot really uh, design their application because they don't have the domain no back, uh, background and knowledge. So probably it will be at the end that the main experts are Java developers. So they will work on the Java fix as a kind of like a, the reference implementation and the other fronts and will follow up with that. That's the most realistic uh, case. But I said that depends on developers who show up for these tasks. And it can be when we have great uh, uh, HTML5 front-end developer that at the end, that will be the only front-end that the JavaFX application was only kind of like a prototype for getting there, but it will not be used in to maintain many different front-ends when they don't really add value, doesn't make really much sense. So we are not bought at all to use JavaFX front-end. So just, uh, yeah, it's a question of development resources. <coughs> Uh, the, yeah, for the trade protocol framework, Stephen has developed a very uh, promising framework for verifying 
all the possible states in a, in a protocol. A trade protocol is basically a state machine and uh, depending on the events you are moving to the next states and it can have different branches and it can become complicated at some point when there are different branches and different uh, options and to verify that all these different branches and different states are really uh, valid and in the correct state is challenging without any automatic framework and he's working on this so that's very promising and that will enable and you reduce the risk when you add a new uh, protocol that yeah that it uh, that you have already some uh, some tool set which helps you to make it safe the <coughs> Wallet integration will work basically over RPC or CRMQ for getting um, push the data. Um, James have worked on this and um, yeah, uh, the prototype all worked. So the next step is to get it production ready. So yeah, we're moving already. I uh, said already a little bit about this, um, what are in state of the prototype uh, code base and uh, the participants. <coughs> Maybe I go a little bit back how it started. Over the past months, I did a little bit of broader outreach to research in the whole tech space and blockchain space to check around what the interesting developments, what the interesting technology, which protocols are might be use, uh, useful for BISC. And uh, as I said, my conclusion was that there's no best single protocol and the best what we can do is to offer a suite of protocols and let the user decide what's the best for their context and their needs. <clears throat> and this led basically to this proposal, which I did a few months ago. And after the proposal, I made a, uh, a kind of like a, a, yeah, a, a, pr a, a pr starting project for, um, for the minimum viable version with a offer book and a peer-to-peer -peer system and a reputation-based uh, uh, protocol, which doesn't require a wallet or whatever, where people can trade based on some trust derived from some reputation, and uh, <clears throat> and then move on from this um, viable, uh, uh, minimum viable uh, project and get the next features added, like integrating wallets, getting real trade protocols integrated, and so on. Um, we started then some follow-up projects um, for investigating the feasibility to check out if we are not asking for too much, if we, we if we are able to build this, basically, if, if there are show, some showstoppers on the way. And it turned out it's feasible, as we have completed two of those projects, and we got a pretty good picture now about the whole architecture and the whole system that I think there is no showstopper, uh, for sure. A lot of challenges, a lot of work ahead but I think um, doesn't hold us back. James uh, said he completed the proof of work concept for uh, the wallet integration. So he did it with uh, Electrum, with uh, Bitcoin Core, and with other blockchains like Litecoin and uh, Liquid and Monero, mm -hmm. as far as I remember. So it basically has worked out that there is no big problem in that area, it was also expected. And the next step will be that uh, he will start on, on implementing it. Guy Hoopsan has w uh, worked on a proof of concept for dynamically loading external dependencies. At the beginning, it was not so clear how we are integrating like a wallet and so on. So he wanted to know the option to dynamically load um, code base into the Java application. I think that might not be needed at the end, but at least we know how to do it now and might be useful for update uh, uh, functionality. But he looked then into many other areas as well, like um, feasibility to use Graal VM, that's a native image from the Java runtime plus the application. So you got basically converted your Java application to a native uh, application. It's a project from Oracle. They are pushing it a lot. so. Uh, there's a lot of dev power behind it, but I think it's still early days. So when we tried it out, like with BISC or with the current prototype, it already had problems and it wouldn't have need more time to get it running. So we dropped it at the moment. But when it comes time for deployment, we should look at it again. Uh, it decreases the startup time, so it's very fast to start up. 
and the memory footprint. And those are downsides of the Java VM. <coughs> Runtime performance seems that it's more or less the same. Um, the, yeah, and also to set up uh, infrastructure and investigate uh, structure and technology for a web application, API structure, uh, and the uh, overall Gradle project setup. The very modular uh, setup, uh, more modular like the current BISC one. And it's still an uh, ongoing work in process, especially with the web app, and it, it probably will uh, work on this a little bit. And so, but yeah, uh, that's the current state. Um, as said, Stephen has worked on this uh, protocol framework, which is very promising, as well on a lightning based trade protocol, uh, where he made a um, a proposal a while back, so that's um, very project a great network. Myself, I was working on the peer to peer network mainly, and over the past weeks, uh, moved on over domain uh, to the offer domain and create no offer domain mainly, also offer book and create offer, <coughs> and started on some your overall application structure and so on, wow. and um, will probably work a little bit longer on that to get uh, the basics that we can work more on the UX because UX is a main challenge uh, with more options things get more complicated and we want to improve the UX uh, of this cannot decrease it so that will be a challenge how to do it in the best way to yeah, to make it as simple as possible for the user but to really develop the UX more in detail we need to know more the details of the domain uh, of the alpha domain how everything works together uh, chris has started to work on the overall architecture with api and um, technology for mobile app and so on <coughs> and also worked together with steve uh, started to work uh, on the concept how we want to communicate it to a broader audience especially to developers so we need to attract more developers a lot of work ahead and i think we have very good uh, position now it's a new brand new project uh, it's very interesting technology this has a great reputation uh, i think it's just a question that people need to hear about it nyman and ward have worked on a ux click dummy for the offer so we put it on a whole on hold at the moment because yeah we as said we need to work out a little bit more on the, the details from the domain uh, what's really needed exactly uh, cd 2357 uh, has worked on a web app uh, click dummy for the create offer process that was very helpful for myself to use this as a basic for the uh, for the job implementation but that's uh, yeah nearly nothing there yet we created a repository on the BISC github page and started our first pending PR so any developer is welcome to help us reviewing and it's also a good option to <coughs> to learn the beginning so with BISC I said it's very difficult when you have a huge code base and you're a new developer there's a lot to learn and a lot to read and with a new project you can yeah you can do it by streaming when you, every week you have there's a new pull request and you can review it and learn automatically what's going on so there are of course many open questions as well one of the bigger areas is the question how the DAO will be in this queue. And this goes, I've not talked about this, but um, there are, it's very easy also to, to port a trade protocol to another blockchain. So when the multisig based uh, protocol on BISC, uh, on Bitcoin is too expensive because of mining fees, we can make another uh, parallel trade protocol uh, on liquid or some other blockchain where the mining fees are super low and but then it comes to the problem how the bsq uh, trade fees can be paid when it's a different uh, blockchain uh, and it leads also to the other problem when the mining fees are very high on on the bitcoin blockchain the yeah, bsq for the governance and for trading fees is just too much on the trade on the mining fees and there are some ideas and some possibilities to move over bsq or distribute it to different blockchains that's basically not a big problem uh it's basically burning bsq on the 
it by proving that you have earned it, you is you get issued uh, the coins on the other blockchain. So the total amount of BSQ always stays the same. And when you can do it in both direction, then you can ensure that the prices are basically always the same as well. So it shouldn't be really too difficult, but it's a project on its own. So we want to sit to not get overwhelmed with work. And depending on all this, how it plays out, which protocols will be really implemented and so on, <coughs> the whole area around the DAO. In question what we cannot really decide yet how to deal with it. I think that has to develop over time. And it's related also with the fee model. We want to avoid uh, this fee transaction, what we have in the current BISC protocol. And with some uh, protocol that just doesn't work, there will be protocols where there is no cryptocurrency at all, where you exchange dollar to fiat, uh, to, to euro or whatever you want. Uh, and we don't want to introduce that people require just for the fees and the cryptocurrency and need to buy BSQ or whatever. So uh, it's not clear yet how we deal. One option is to just make it free as so all those trade protocols, which all also will have likely less security that they, we use it kind of like a advertising to bring new users and for small amounts, they are usually only suited for small amounts that we say, okay, it's free. and at some point we'll also use other trade protocols which are not free and with provide more security and so on but it's an open question the fee model at least we don't want to add friction and dependencies uh, uh, model so we need to find a way that it just organically fits into the protocol into the system so that's a little bit open question and with psq we add an, an extra constraint so i'm not 100% sure if this model to use BSQ for and if that really works so well in the new concept, but as I said, open question for discussion and for concept work. <coughs> the social aspects are a big open question. I have not thought too deep about it. Uh, I have some rough gut feeling and I, I and with uh, together with reputation, it has some tension with privacy. People are too public there. It's not only about their privacy, they also can hurt the privacy of the trading part. Be careful in that area to not go too extreme and too far. Uh, the basic approach is that we are leaving the decision to the users, but to do it in a way that you cannot violate the privacy of the other trading partners and to make it very explicit so when a trader is using to link together their identity but they should be aware of the of the trade-offs another open question is the deployment said we want to start with a kind of like a minimum viable version <laughs> and then it's a question yeah do we integrate it as a kind of like a do we integrate it completely in BISC? There's just a, a different view, a different part in BISC, like an add-on or a plugin in BISC, that it comes with the BISC application, but it's a kind of like a different window. It's more separate. They roll it out completely independent as a side project. And then that's related to the branding. I mean, I said this MISC brand or BISC, uh, MISC term is only at the moment as a project type title. It's not really intended that we branded in that direction. So I think the goal is to brand it as BISC 2.0, but that has to be kind of, when we have this first minimum minimum uh, viable version, we cannot brand it as BISC 2.0 because it's just not uh, a full replacement. So that will take some time to get there. And in the meantime, yeah, when we have this first version out, we have to figure out how we, how we brand it, how we deploy it and so on. Uh, no clear, 100%, no 100 clear ideas. There are some options and so on, but it's also not our burning problem at the moment, but something what we have to think about at some point of view of time. <coughs> and that also comes to the point that um, it's not clear yet what will be the future role of BISC once MISC is really this 2.0 uh, production level uh, stage. Uh, it can be that, like the current BISC trade protocol, it's based on BSQ that with the delayed payer transaction, the DAO and BSQ play an important role there. So when BSQ will not be really integrated in MISC, 
then um, there might be just a case that the current rate for the cost stay there and it might be a smaller market because many others will move over to, to MISC like uh, doing atomic cross-chain swaps there. For Monero it doesn't make sense to do it uh, with the multi-sig approach. Uh, <coughs> But um, yeah, that's open yet. Uh, how this um, plays out when we when we integrate basically the same protocol type in MISC, I think there is no uh, need and no use case to keep it in BISC as parallel. It just uh, adds more effort on maintenance and everything. <coughs> Depending on the integration for the DAO and BSQ, it could be that BISC is then kind of like a DAO governance application. Mm -hmm and bsq wallet yeah. and the role of bsq might itself. become a little bit smaller that's not <laughs> like a pool and shit not also like <laughs> this is in El Salvador. economics of bsq so it's a broader topic it's what needs more thought of how it develops that's, that's but expensive. it all as that's said it long depends that? on <laughs> the final state oh, of no. misc so, so when it turns out that we can integrate bsq and the DAO is basically the same like in bisc then it's the full replacement and uh yeah Oh, then yeah. it's the easy way then <laughs> at not? some point we say okay we we let the old BISC run out people can still use it but the market will diminish and most people will move over to the new uh, version there is still a role for the old one we have to figure out yeah with the branding how we call then the old version and so on and then it depends on the extent when it's only a DAO <coughs> uh, focused application we can rename it and it's MISC or yeah BISC DAO app. Uh, when it's still a trade protocol, we yeah we have to think about it. But uh, as long as they're not Calvin Air aged, uh, not our problem. So as long as they're not Calvin the, Air yeah, aged, uh, conceptual yeah. open questions. <coughs> so any 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 person who is strong mm. and uh, and ex concept <coughs> development and who has good ideas so in that direction is very people? welcome to help. Uh, we, uh, so the, the, the people who are mostly working on the project two, now, we are all focused five, on development, days. so we are not oh, spending well, too much time reasonable. on this it's open conceptual question. Nice. So that brings us to the next point where we need help. And, um, is that near the <coughs> beach? Yeah, of course, as always, uh, uh, developers, a, so as it's Java, I didn't say it at the beginning. I was yeah, I was starting to learn and was considering uh, to use Rust as wow. uh, development right see as see? the language. <laughs> but the main reason why I uh, move on with that was that for myself I was aware it would need probably half a year minimum to really learn it good enough to build such an application and then you're a bloody beginner, mm -hmm. you need another one or two years to become really mature next year. And right, yeah, it's chips. not a good idea to build <laughs> a challenging Wait, project, requires. which is more challenging, like so the existing bit, which is already challenging a as a, yeah, when you have the primary there you go. New, uh, complex <laughs> this is a business uh, trip. programming language. <laughs> and the next thing is that we, in BISC, we don't have Rust developers. When you get completely new developers, they don't know their domain of BISC. To develop this, uh, you need in experts of the trading yeah, of, of, of BISC and, uh, and the space, and we just don't have these people. So when we would have five Rust experts around who know already BISC and everything, it would have been a realistic option, but that's not the case, so it was not feasible. And it's probably less productive at the end. From my gut feeling, I had the feeling that it's not faster like doing it in Java. And modern Java is pretty cool. I uh, know it's not very popular in the Bitcoin space, but I think that's mostly wrong reasons. Uh, and it's a huge developer community, so it's it's uh, yeah. And with Rust, of course, there are many Rust developers now in the Bitcoin space, but the good ones are usually already occupied with projects. There are many interesting yeah, projects. Everybody's doing Rust, basically. We are in a big competition. Not even a little bit better with Java because there are not so many interesting Java projects in the Bitcoin space, in my opinion. And when a ch Java developer is looking for becoming active in the Bitcoin space, I think BISC is a mm -hmm. prime candidate. Yeah, we want to, as I said, um, do in parallel this HTML5 fr JavaScript front end. So any developer or developers are very welcome. Could only make it basically our prime 
UI front end when we have really, really reliable developers who can react very quickly. When I'm working and developing on it, I don't want to wait for one or two weeks until to get the feature implemented. So I, I could only drop the Java fix front end when I'm sure I have a developer of my requirements in very short time, in a good quality. When we have this, then uh, we can go full that direction. Uh, mobile app is another area where we need a developer. Mm -hmm. uh, UX experts, um, yeah, we started, it's a little bit on hold at the moment, but that's a big area. Uh, many UX challenges, also the identity mm -hmm. manager. Uh, yeah, it's complex how to manage this, and we have to do it in a way that's not confusing users. Uh, design, of course, we hope that Pedro will find time to <laughs> do this, the final design. We are basing everything on the latest designs from Pedro, um, but um, when he doesn't have enough time, we need some designer at some point who uh, can replicate the yeah the, the missing designs for this different. I mean, the current design from Pedro was the current disk, and there are quite some changes. So we need some different designs, uh, and we need a designer who can. Uh, replicate the quality of Peter. It's not the easy challenge for sure, uh, not the easy task for sure, but hopefully we would, uh, the best will be that Peter can do this all uh, and hopefully that works out, but when he's too occupied with other work, uh, we need some somebody in. That they're urgent, I think we, we are not at the moment to, to need a final design, but maybe in something like Maybe for this first minimal uh, viable version, which could become ready maybe in two months, uh, when we want to release this, we want to have a final design, of course, a quality design. <coughs> As said, uh, all these conceptual questions will need more work. So everybody who has some talent in that area is very welcome to help us. And the product communication, yeah. At the moment, I think it's mainly about finding contributors for all these areas. Uh, we don't need to yeah, to get to the users at the moment before we have out yet. And we want to do it in a low risk fashion anyway. So when we have this first uh, version, which we can, we also want to make it as a big uh, splash. So we want to do it low risk. There can be bugs and so on. The users will be our beta testers basically. And uh, yeah, I want to do it in that fashion. Um, <laughs> I think I'm through with uh, basically everything what I want to cover. I'm sure there are left questions and um, yeah, uh, things to discuss. It's all fresh, everybody's welcome. Uh, we kept it a little bit on the low visibility, not, not, not really with uh, low visibility because it was projects and uh, proposals and so on, but we didn't uh, try to, to reach out too much. I mean, that's not the first attempt because we were not 100% sure if it's really feasible and we want to be sure if, if we really can build it. I'm convinced that we can build it now. Now it's just a question of our computer workforce that we get enough people to really get it done. So, yeah, I'm done from my side. So I'm happy to answer any questions and hear any feedback, whatever you want to discuss. Steve, I uh, have not followed the chat room. Have there been any questions in the chat room? Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, there was just one minor question earlier about um, release dates, which I'm assuming we're not uh, ready to really announce yet, but that's uh, the only thing so far in the chat. Yeah, with release date, I said, um, and <coughs> check what is a uh, very simple offer book with maybe some simple trade protocol um, also a reputation based trade protocol that's basically still the plan first um, to get the it's a little bit I mean from the peer-to-peer -peer network I have I think 70 80 percent I mean the bigger part which I'm missing is the peer management and uh, <coughs> and the details protection part um, and then to get it really production ready, everything. So uh, there's still much more work, but functionality, also the data storage is implemented to, to a large extent. And 
the different uh, networks are w uh, working and you can send uh, private messages and mailbox messages, all that works already. So I would say 70% is done from the peer-to-peer -peer network. And the other area, we have to get it basically really production ready. It doesn't make sense to kind of like the current prototype and release this and then we have, as soon as it's released, we get into the troubles of backward compatibility. I mean, sure, we can be a little bit more radical and can break things in such early versions, but the goal is that to not to do this. So, so we have to a pretty good standard before we are releasing it, and it's a little bit hard to estimate. Uh, I would say two or three months is maybe realistic, uh, but depends on the workforce at the moment. Uh, it's uh, mainly uh, Stephen and James and uh, Gay Hoopstan who worked on this, but then they got also distracted by BISC work again. So the last weeks were not uh, much work uh, uh, done on, on MISC. And I myself also at the moment, I'm working on uh, some BISC tasks. So it depends on that context as also how much we can really find uh, full time uh, to, to work full time on, on MISC, how fast we can progress, but something like that, two or three months might, might be much better realistic time frame and for the full featured uh, project it's pretty difficult to estimate with the current workforce i would say probably takes a year to be realistic we have really two or three different trade protocols i mean the mains from the trade protocols are atomic cross chain swap with monero and then others but the, the main goal uh <clears throat> to have one multi-sig based protocol for fiat and to have uh, a reputation-based uh, protocol where, for instance, PS coupons can be used or some social media yeah. identities or whatever. It will be pretty flexible, but those three protocols are the main goal at the beginning. Lightning, uh, when Stephen can get this finished, uh, that would be another prime candidate, of course. And then maybe the multi can be copied to Liquid. That's then a low effort. Um, so that we get kind of like a cheap uh, mining fee, fee version from the classical trade protocol. But to have this set of three or four trade protocols, I think when we have this, then we are basically ready for calling it BISC 2.0 before it's kind of like a, a beta version for, yeah, for getting there. I see. Okay, that sounds good. So Huey's asking if there are any other if the other efforts regarding the wallet are on hold right now? I don't know if he's talking about BISC as a whole or the BISC wallet. Um, which effort regarding the wallets? Let's see. So I'm not aware of any huge open task in BISC. I think most work which is done in BISC is more kind of like bug fixing, maintenance, improving payment methods and that. And many of this work can be moved over to MISC, like especially the payment methods, uh, <clears throat> everything what we have there, it's much easier than to, yeah, to move it over to, to uh, MISC. Yeah, the, the uh, uh, pro uh, protocol related, yeah, there's one project, what SQ uh, working on, or is, I think it's done now, it's just a question to get the testing and everything final, is the B, uh, atomic BSQ transaction protocol. But beside that, from my side at least, I don't have uh, any intention to work on further protocol extensions in BISC because, as I said, it's just, it will become a hack. You cannot do it in a proper way in BISC. It's just uh, to really rewrite the whole concept, the core. Yeah, you, you would exchange the engine of, of a car. That's just, uh, that's the reason why we, we started with MISC. So I think any developer who want to work on this is i think it's more reasonable to put the efforts in misc and do it there of course anybody can do it when they want to do it but i myself uh, would not put the effort into this the single transaction protocol is interesting and that will be a prime candidate for uh, the multi sig based uh, protocol implementation in misc and we can probably use the taproot because with activation it seems reasonable that it get uh, activated roughly in this time when we need it <clears throat> uh, but to yeah to add different or to change also to change the current trade protocol in BISC I mean that might be more realistic but it's also we have seen it with the last 
protocol hard fork, it caused a lot of uh, disruption and, and uh, we lost a lot of users and, and trade volume. It's very difficult to do it without any disruption that there are no bugs and no problems at all. And it ends up then a lot of uh, um, customer support case as a, a support cases and disputes and so on when there are bugs and bigger problems. So I'm not looking forward to get uh, this stuff repeated, but I'm also yeah, when other developers want to do it, of course, they can do it. I personally just wouldn't put any effort from my side into this. I see. Can you go back to yeah, regarding the external wallets, uh, it, uh, I mean, the integration it, for the user experience, it should be as easy as possible so that when they don't, when a new user don't have any wallet, the goal is also to get it automatically installed with BISC and you have an electron wallet being connected. Uh, but it's an external wallet, which has only their yeah, the RPC interface. So there's a kind of like a clear interface and it still has some risk, uh, of course. When somebody take over your application or your machine, then you are lost anyway. Uh, but uh, it reduces the risk when it's not in the same code base. Like uh, currently, the Bitcoin J is just part of BISC, and it's not only it, uh, the security risk is not the only aspect. With Bitcoin J, we the big problem with Bitcoin J is it's very resource heavy, <coughs> as some uh, open problems like when you get a lot of transactions it becomes very very slow over time and sync it becomes very heavy and it uh, the main problem is it's not up to date with the latest feature in uh, in bitcoin with it took years until it got implemented and even then there was some stuff missing and probably some yeah a lot of money at the end to get sec in integrated and you Developments like Taproot, yeah, I don't want to wait another five years to get Taproot on Bitcoin J. And some other stuff like Replaced by Fee never got integrated. And yeah, it's just uh, not a very well managed project. Um, <clears throat> and and it doesn't, I mean, it was built as a peer to peer. The basic idea was great to have a peer to peer light client, but Bloom filters were conceptually and technically completely broken from privacy. And it, at some point, it will not be supported at all anymore. From the Bitcoin side, <clears throat> and we fixed it with this federated nodes where BIS contributors are running this node, so that we are solving this privacy issue or mitigating it. But at the end, that's a federated server system. That's not a decentralized uh, system anymore. And then you have only the disadvantages of the higher resource requirements and lower speed and everything. And you, it's much faster to have real servers like Electrum. So. And of course, these contributors will probably run also Electrum servers then, and users can run their own and configure their own. So they have their flexibility to go um, from the extreme to have everything there under their control and have more effort to get this all set up to the other extreme to have it the most convenience and lose a little bit of tr uh, have to trust um, some other nodes, node operators. But it's basically the same system the same state like in like in BISC, users have to trust the BISC node operators, uh, the Bitcoin J node, or the Bitcoin node operators used for Bitcoin J, or their local node. Yeah, for BSQ, <coughs> I said that's a big open question. I have not spent too much time on this, and it's a project on its own, basically. I think most, I think that Bitcoin as the main chain for trading will diminish. Maybe it will still stay as a kind of like a niche. But I think for fiat, and yeah, that's another topic what I have not talked about. I assume that the, the version of fiat as we know it with banks and with cash and so will get replaced by some sort of digital currency. And special, uh, so all the central banks and the countries are aiming to get some central bank digital currencies. I think that the West, Europe and the US and the rest of the Western world will fail to do it. Um, the banks are terrible to be innovative and to do uh, challenging uh, technical stuff. And uh, I cannot imagine that they get this done. The only who are succeeding and who have it already are Chinese. So the dig digital yuan is reality and will become very strong soon. And 
they are they have uh, it's not 100 percent clear yet but from the current state they want to integrate it with permissionless blockchain so there will be bridges where you can trade it and have atomic swaps with other blockchain um, like uh, uh, Polkadot and Ethereum, I think, are supported, <coughs> and some other blockchains which are not so famous, not Bitcoin and not Monero. But anyway, you get some interface to connect with this world, uh, which is already positive. Uh, I think uh, what we can expect from America and Europe will be worse uh, from that, what they communicate so far. Um, so we have to plan or we have to take in consideration what happens when this when we are reaching this point that uh, the normal fiat get more or less abandoned and replaced by central bank digital currencies and <clears throat> yeah the current trade protocols based on bank transfers and so on we have to rethink this and hope is that the central bank digital currencies that they are more interoperable with uh, with permissionless blockchain tokens like currently with banks it cannot be much worse or hopefully not <laughs> And at least it seems that it's uh, that yeah, there are some bridges and so on. And maybe you cannot trade it directly without having an account at the Chinese central bank or at their banks, uh, which are offering them the services. But you can get it traded over some other tokens and so on. So it's already much more fluent. But it's a, a completely open question. It's too early to say anything how this will play out. And. <clears throat> Yeah, to bring the question uh, back to the question re regarding BSQ. Um, the multisig based protocol is mainly for fiat. I think everything altcoin will be atomic cross chain swaps. That's just the prime candidate for this. Uh, <clears throat> so, and uh, for fiat, uh, it depends a little bit on this uh, development. It can be that this fiat all will also become basic that fiat become really an altcoin in a way and at the end there is not really a need anymore for this multi-sig based protocol or it becomes less and less yeah, relevant and, winding down now. and uh using psq in an atomic about? swap context uh, yeah. oh that place i have not thought about it uh, how it can be used I mean, and if it works or so it maybe maybe not and then it with current BSQ, it's based on Bitcoin, so it would only work when one side is Bitcoin, and that's also not guaranteed. Uh, of course, the cross chain swap should work between any ex uh, chains. And I think it's too early to, um, yeah, to really decide in which direction it should go. When we see that there's one that maybe Liquid become the main <laughs> chain where all these multi sig based uh, protocols are are used, <coughs> then it probably makes sense to move over BSQ to Liquid. And the way how it can be done, as I said, is pretty simple. So you are burning BSQ, you get a proof of burn for this. With this proof of burn, when we do it low tech in a more manual way, you just make a compensate or a reimbursement issue uh, request on the on the liquid side, and the uh, the stakeholders can verify your proof. So they see you have burned Bitcoin based BSQ, you have burned maybe ten thousand BSQ there, and then you have the right to get issued. 10,000 uh, liquid BS based BSQ on the other chain. And one day when you want to go back, you do it in the other direction. And it's, it just has a little bit of delay and the voting process. Uh, maybe we can do it really automatically uh, by code, but that would require more effort and development uh, effort. Uh, <coughs> I think the easiest to make it that way. And probably there is not much need to go back and forward so either you move in that direct yeah you move to one chain and st stay there and this become then probably the dominant chain and <clears throat> but when it turns out that there are many maybe we have five or six different chains are uh, we we could distribute bsq also to five or si six different uh, chains by that model it just gets more complicated and so on and then we have to decide where we do the voting we don't want to do the voting in parallel five times <laughs> different chains so it's many open questions and the whole fee concept i start about it and i was surprised somehow that it's so difficult and complicated <laughs> to find a good fee model uh, <clears throat> and we don't want to make a rocket science about the fee payment when fee payment becomes more complicated like the trade protocol yeah we're doing something wrong and we have to figure out and think a little bit more open about different approach it yeah give it free and and find other models how we how we can generate the revenue
maybe even some kind of like donation model. Maybe we do all the trades free and and we have one big working uh, we'll just say, okay, I'm fine with donating with my 0.1% or whatever they want. Could try out such stuff and when it works, yeah, we have solved this fee problem and we don't have on-chain transaction, which are the fees are always a privacy issue also. When the fees are going to one central address, it's a collector, you can see all their uh, the senders of those uh, coins are risk traders and so on. So mm -hmm. it's a it's a broader open question, but we need more more sort of. Yeah, yeah it's a fee model. It's actually it's not really simple. Uh, technically, we have this extra transaction, so that's not very good for privacy and not very good for the mining fees and the costs. And the distribution is also not easy. <coughs> we see that most people are not using BSQ as a fee for a fee payment, even if it's much cheaper. I think it's only 20, 25% of the users are using BSQ. And the others are requiring the, yeah, the role of the Burning Man, which is a problem. There are some ideas, I know, but those ideas have some, they're not perfect and they're better like the current model, but they're not perfect as well. And they add some complexity, some friction, some costs. Um, so, and that's another uh, goal of the new system is to avoid all these special roles so like seed nodes. The seed nodes will only play this introductory role, not any, anything anymore. There will be not, not be a data delivery from seed nodes anymore. So, and we, by that we are reducing all these requirements for having these roles in this, which are kind of like semi-trusted and so on. And the same, we, yeah, we don't want to introduce something like a Burning Man again, or like the aggregator, so which is for sure, but it's also better when we don't need this at all. So it should be much more really a peer-to-peer -peer system where every peer is basically the, has the same role and the, the same level. There are no special roles. Will not work 100%. There might be some small things where we need special roles, like uh, sending the alert for an update we cannot do the level of course. Uh, but even there, there might be some ideas that to not do releases anymore, to, to make a script that people are uh, building themselves. And so that's uh, some rough idea what we could look into it at some point. Uh, not sure if it's feasible, but maybe this problem to basically have only the code base and uh, there's no centralized deployment and release process anymore. Uh, Hue, did I answer your question or do you mean something differently with uh, that uh, you consider it very simple, the current fee model? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, th I think th there should, there should not be friction and I think that's uh, why the companies in, in the, in the whole economy has moved away from from the models where you have to pay for your software or whatever and at the end they ended up with these terrible models like selling your user data first for advertising now for surveillance uh, <coughs> but i think the reason why they came to these models was were the same problems that the pay, uh, the friction for payment and they, for them it's worse because they needed a uh, the banking system and credit card system for receiving the payments and especially for small amount it's and with crypto, it's a little bit better, but it's also not perfect when, especially on the Bitcoin blockchain with high mining fees. I think the reason, yeah, that when the mental costs and the technical costs for paying a service fee, when they when it becomes too high, it's a problem, and 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 uh, other approaches should be investigated. And um, yeah, I think it's something where we have to be a little bit more creative and make some experiments. Maybe it really works that when it's presented in the right way, I mean, usually donation doesn't work from my experience. And But I think a main reason is that there is some mental costs and some friction involved. You don't want to enter your credit card number just to do a $5 donation. Uh, when it's really uh, one button click and no more that you select uh, maybe even default that by default and you can opt out when you don't want to support the project 
uh, that you not uh, want to pay the fees. When it's really very uh, friction low, integrated and uh, somehow may maybe it could work, uh, but, or maybe there are some other bad ideas. Maybe another idea is to make a kind like a lottery, but that's a dangerous direction, of course, with regulation and so on. But to to give users who are supporting the projects uh, the chance to get to get more back, and investing in shares also is the same model at the end. When you are supporting a project just because you found it's a great idea, it's a startup, and you get some early uh, equity or so, uh, yeah, it, it's a kind of like gamble. <coughs> and when you start uh, you, you're like you're a lucky guy and maybe that might be some approach I mean of course BSQ could be some some sort of this as well but another uh, dangerous pass of course with regulation and security laws anyway uh, it's a broader topic where probably uh, we shouldn't get lost too much at the moment yeah is anything else otherwise maybe I think it's over one hour. Maybe it's good to wrap up. There will be some follow-up presentations from Chris and Steve, uh, <coughs> which will be bound much more intended for a broader audience and especially for developers and also for the technical uh, details about the architecture and so on. Uh, I will focus on development, uh, so I will not continue too much in that direction. Uh, hopefully, other yeah, as I said, hopefully the other uh, guys with more better talent like myself can continue that so i hope it fulfilled the goal that everybody got more or less a clear idea yeah what this is about it, uh, to summarize it it's really uh, the plan for getting the new the next version of bisc <coughs> it's challenging the main goal is the support for different trade protocols and fixing many others and improving many other things on the way which are all difficult to do in BISC. And I think uh, to rebuild uh, a project it requires some justification. But I think one justification is also that the current code it was started more than seven years ago. And at some point, I think it's justified to say, OK, now it's time to redo it new and make it everything clean. It's like when you have an old house. You can fix it all the time, but it always stays an old house in a way. And at some point, uh, refurbishment becomes more expensive, like building it new. Sounds good, Chimp. Thank you so much for the uh, for the overview. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thanks everybody for listening and hope we see more contributors and developers. There are a lot of work waiting for contributors and the development side. We need developers which have good expertise already. The learning Java, it's not the right project. I just have to say it's, uh, yeah, we, we don't really we can help a little bit on the domain side the best developer would be the domain expertise on best on BISC of course but at least on Bitcoin and is experienced Java developer with several years of experience otherwise it's just a too challenging and too big project for beginners yeah uh, thanks everybody and hope, hope call uh, anytime soon Good night.